simple video on a bowl. Just shy of three pounds of clay. I don't like any marks on the bottom like this. It slams down. It's there when you're done. So I pick a side that has no marks on it. This is not really wet as much as it's just moist. I set it on it and I roll it around in circles. And it makes a mound shape that prevents any air bubble from getting caught under it. Slam it about in the middle. And I don't throw with, I don't center with just water. I found that the slurry, half clay, half water, works much better than just plain water. And if you can stomach it, you can dig down the bottom of your pot and dig out some good stuff. Reeks, but it lasts actually longer than the water. Fresh water on it. This is just coning it up. I got the clay right out of the bag, so it's very consistent. But I just got a habit of coning all my clay up. I use the centering like this, and then the karate chop on the top. So this hand's pushing it in on the sides, this hand's holding it down at the top, and then I join them together to make my triangle. This other elbow's stuck right here in my hip. And you can see I slide forward to push the... I'll make it mostly round. Then I'll come back and I'll let this part of my hand give me a head start when I open it up. It's still centered, but I got a head start for putting my fingers in. And I open with my, I'm right handed, so I open with my left thumb and my middle finger. And I put them both, push them both down at the same time. Just water in there. I go to the thickness of the bottom I want. And usually I go all the way to the bottom, and if there's still enough water in there, I pull it out to the width I want it. So I make my depth and out. Um, I guess you could say I have a bad habit of not using depth gauge to see if my bottom's thick or thin enough. I've just, uh, I guess it's good. I've taught myself how to read it, see if it's the right depth. And then my first pull is this kind of grab. This finger and this finger is doing all the work. This guy's just helping this one hold still. Start at the bottom. Now that's the same thickness from the bottom all the way to the top. And then compress the rim a little bit with the goal post, the modified goal post. Same thing, I'm going to use this thumb to cut in this little ramp right here. I don't like this little ramp that comes out right here. You'll see the profile of it change. Now it's cut in a little bit. I stick this finger in that bottom ramp. Again, I'm going to keep it the same thickness from the bottom all the way to the top. The only exception is about a half an inch from the top. I quit because I like my rims just a little bit wider than the rest of the piece. I don't need all this on my hands now. Now I just throw with clean water, which is at the top of my bucket. Cut it in with the thumb at the bottom. Pull it in all the same motion. And you can see the trail marks of my finger. The trick is just being consistent. It's this part of this finger and then my hands from the inside. You can see how this one's a little bit cleaner. And it matches up like this. They're literally straight across from each other. Usually, your outside hand, if you're right-handed like I am, it's just a little bit lower. That's why you can see that little, sometimes you can see a bulge starting from the bottom going up. I'll show you. I'll be sure I do a bulge this time. My left hand is higher than my right hand. That's where that bulge is coming from. That helps you lift the clay up. You're squeezing it and lifting it. Now the inside of my piece has got way too much water. All I'm doing is just getting the water out. And this clay has grog in it. 
little hard pieces and if you don't push them back down especially on the bottom of your piece you'll have the bottom of your piece will be the inside of your bowl will have a rough texture to it which I don't like so you'll see me use that rubber rib to push the grog back down into it and this just cleans up the outside. I don't want as many finger marks on the outside. Also, it reduces my drying time because it gets all this off. I don't have all that water I have to get off. Hold on. Pushing the grog back down on the inside. It makes it nice and smooth. I take the same wooden rib and I just help myself from trimming a little bit. Plus it gives my cutoff wire somewhere to go in a minute. This is a chamois cloth. You can get them from Potter Supply places, or you can buy them at a department store. It's the same stuff. The only trick is you want the thickest one they have. I bought some before that were paper thin and just don't work. This is a good size, or one that's half of this is good. I like this one because you've got enough to grab a hold of it. Real, real thick. Not dripping wet, just wet. And then I cut off wire. Uh, I think these are made by Dirty Girls. Uh, it's the best one I found because you can hook them over your pinkies. And it's heavy duty crimped right here. They do not, it, I've never had one break. But I hook them over my pinky. They come in all different lengths. For an 11 inch bat, I use this one. Hook them over your pinkies. And my thumb placement, you can see the distance of my thumb is just a real common size. I always start towards me. Push away. Some people spin the wheel when they do that. I don't really see the need in doing that. And I'll cut half circles out of this and bring some handles up for that later.